Today on Retro Upgrade, we'll be fixing my flea market find Xbox with ChatGPT. No, not really. We'll be actually fixing the software I found on GitHub for a programmer I made with an Arduino. And that will allow us to fix the EEPROM. Hopefully this is useful for someone out there. This will help with corrupted EEPROMs or maybe a malconfigured one just like mine. Let's go. Welcome everyone back to Retro Upgrade with Carlos here. This is a part two for the Xbox fix from the flea market. So I gave up last time because I couldn't get a picture on it. I still believe it's set to the wrong region by mistake by the pre previous owner. The only reason I believe that is because it's actually making the boot up sound with uh, if I have the headphones on. Normally if the graphics chip or anything in the graphics area dies, you get an error code on, on the blinking light in the front of the console. So I still believe that. So after a lot of digging, I found the uh, old web page with some information. Let me show you. It seems that you can actually read the EEPROM from this uh, machine. Uh, let's share the capture screen. Let's just close down anything you don't need to see. Just kidding, no porn here. So let's go to the link. So I found this first, which is a Xbox EEPROM web page that explains all the values in the bin file. And there is a re region uh, region key, so you you can actually set the region. It, I'm thinking it's set to zero two here and NTSC. You can also set the video mode somewhere, language, and the video mode. Yeah. Uh, this wasn't that interesting for me because there are applications that can actually read these uh, bin files and you can set it up inside the application. I'll show you one in a second. Uh, there are some checksums you need to think of, but the application keeps track of that, so don't worry. Uh, interesting part was the videos here. They show how to make a null modem. That's a serial connect directly from your serial port on your computer and you can actually interface with the I squared C bus on the chip on the Xbox without actually removing it. You could actually just desolder the chip and uh, put it in a programmer and read it and write it again. That works fine. The problem is the soldering part. It's near a lot of stuff. So <laughs> if I can, uh, re if I can reprogram it without removing it, it's better. So I found this. Uh, this is the Raspberry Pi programmer for the EEPROM. <laughs> this is the Raspberry Pi EEPROM uh, programmer reader uh, made by this guy, RISC510. And uh, I have a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's a little uh, pain of the ass uh, to set up because I have to reinstall Linux again on it, and, uh, download the libraries and set it up. So, okay, so this is the Xbox side. These two pins, SDA and SCL, make the I squared C possible. So, you, if you have a, let's say a Raspberry Pi and you hook up the SC, SCL and SDA lines from the Raspberry Pi to this, you could, in theory, just read the chip first. SDA stands for uh, Serial Data something, and S SCL is the Serial Clock. So this is the clock pin, this is the data pin. You, I have to remove the mod chip to be able to reach these pins. And uh, also, I need to clear out the holes. These are all covered in solder, uh, because they wanted to, I guess. <laughs> and now, uh, what you need to do is uh, put two wires here. Uh, you can use a header. I'm going to show you how to do that because that's the way I'm going to do it. 
but I'm not going to use a Raspberry Pi because I was pretty sure someone somewhere made a, a Arduino based one and uh, actually I found it after a little more digging let's open up a new tab here and this one so this is practically the same information it shows where the chip is located on different models I have this one with a lot of stuff around it so that's why I don't want to remove it and uh, these actually had a few more uh, let's say options <laughs> so this one was the one that was actually interesting for me because it uses uh, Arduino as a middle hand to read and write the via the I squared C bus of course if you have a COM port on your computer still mine doesn't uh, you can use the null modem and just skip this step obviously you can follow this link I'll put all the links in the description so you can find them if you need it okay so let's go to the Arduino programmer so this is quite simple it's two parts it's uh, Arduino file uh, obviously <laughs> to program your Arduino and then also a Python file so you need to maybe uh, let's say a, a Python file to interface with the Arduino program inside so it's just a serial monitor that reads and writes from the serial port and gets uh, confirmation and stuff uh, I'm actually not using this one I found another one that seems to be a little easier to use so let's see if I have it in my I think that's this is the one yeah Arduino prom so this is the same thing it's for the Xbox EEPROM there are a lot of them this is made for the Arduino Micro and I thought this would be an issue but I don't know enough uh, about uh, Arduino programming to make that decision so I had an idea <laughs> and I went to GP uh, chat GPT uh, which is an AI program that knows a lot so I went in, asked it the question, pretty much, do I need to change anything in the code to make an Arduino Nano work? Because I don't have a Pro Micro. They have the pins in different places. So I assumed you need to. Okay, so I just let's just uh, ask it. Uh, using the I2C bus, Bus, uh, do I need to change anything from a pro micro to nano? It should know the context by itself. I don't need to tell it it's an Arduino, but it will. Yeah, the pin also are different. A4 and A5, that's correct. and uh, yeah the voltages so and not that this is needed right uh, but it will help a lot if you don't know programming or if you have a different hardware you just ask it and it gives you a clear answer so this is amazing uh, because uh, if you go into the forums and ask and or check other other responses you could get the wrong information and fry your chip and stuff this goes by pure knowledge so you can actually ask it uh, could you review this code could you you review this code and tell me what it does let's see and uh, my spelling is not good but fine and I'm going to go copy the actual file, the Arduino one. Uh, let's see, where do I have it? Over there. So I downloaded the file from the uh, from the page up here. Code, download, uh, over there. 
I already have it in my computer. So I started the Arduino IDE. You also need to install that. Everything's highlighted here. The Nano uh, is less than $3 <laughs> on AliExpress. I have a clone. Uh, let's see. This is the Arduino IDE. You use it to program the chip uh, on the Arduino itself. This is the code. So it's it seems like a lot, uh, but it's not actually. You just take all the code, if it's not too much. Let's see if this fits. Let's go over to ChatGPT. And it will actually analyze the code and tell you exactly what it does, which is amazing. If maybe you know a little bit about programming like I do, I can program in C, C Sharp, and a few other languages, some assembly. So I actually could read it pretty well, but I didn't remember how to change the pinouts. So I actually just asked it. I put, put this in. How do I change the pinouts or do I need to change the pinouts? In this case, I actually don't because the wire uh, library changes it depending on the Arduino that was detected. Uh, here we go. It's literally telling you exactly what it does. <laughs> yes. So use this uh, resource. Okay, uh, enough of a tangent. Uh, you can see it's really thorough. And if you see it stops writing at any moment, you can just uh, type continue and it sh will keep on going. Uh, this is free to try. You just go to the ChatGPT website, register and try. That's pretty much it. And it's amazing. You will learn so much. Or if you have any doubts about anything else, actually, uh, uh, yeah compositions of stuff or uh, don't take medical advice for this thing because it's a uh, it's still an AI it doesn't know everything obviously but I'm so impressed with this this is this this is a godsend for anyone that wants to learn programming because you can just ask it what does this do and you you know instantly okay so let's uh, let's go over to the camera and I'll show you what I have so you can do the same if you have the same so let's switch let's go to the overhead I'll just zoom in okay, that's pretty much in focus let's see okay so what I'll be using is this this is an Arduino Nano clone I just need to check the pins. They are all labeled, so it should be shouldn't be that hard to find A4 and A5. I think they are on the other side. Yep, they are. And I'll use some Dupont cables. Uh, I have a lot of these, so th th these are pretty cheap. And where I need to connect them is right here on these two. Uh, no, those two over there. So I just need to connect these two wires to these two and this to the USB on my computer and I should be able to read off the chip. And if I'm right, I'll uh, run uh, run the BIOS, uh, no, the bin, bin file that's cr created in, through uh, a program. It will tell me the settings inside that BIOS file or the bin file. It is kind of a BIOS file. All the settings for the even the hardware key for the C, uh, for the hard drive and everything is stored in there. Even the serial number for the machine and a few other important things. So will be interesting to see if I was right from the beginning. I'll split off the DuPont cable. So I have only two. So don't get too many cables hanging around. Let's hook it up. Uh, let's see. Hey, I'm kind of blind here. A4, A5. Over these two. A4, 
A4, A5, yeah. So these two. So I just need to solder wick these pads over here, these two, because it used that strange, uh, what's it called, uh, mod chip. If this works, I'm going to be able to see the screen, even if it's in black and white, and then I'm going to be able to see if the mod chip actually works, because I'm quite unsure it's making good contact with those pogo pins and working. Uh, watch the last video if you're confused with uh, uh, what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, so let's program the Arduino first. So let's hook it up to the computer and do that. And then we'll come back and desolder these holes. If I see I can't get the solder out, can happen on some models. Uh, I'll just solder wire and uh, connect it to the DuPont cable. I have a uh, double female, double male, uh, so it depends on what I need. Okay, so let's go over to the computer and see how we program it. Oh yeah, you'll need one of these old connectors for the USB. This doesn't have USB-C. It's, it's a shame really, but hey, they work. So I have it hooked up to my computer. Let's see secondary screen. Okay. Let's bring this down, bring this up, okay. First of all, you need to choose the right COM port on your computer. You can do it over here. I actually don't know which COM port this is on, so let's do this. I'll disconnect it, close this, and go into COM port again. The number six disappeared, so that means it's on number six. So I connect it again. There we go, COM port 6 selected. Now you need to select the board. And Arduino Nano. That's how the library knows what to use. And that's pretty much it. And the processor at Mega 328P. It selects it by default. It has a bootloader, so it works. Okay, so. What you need to do now is actually just program it and hope for the best so you don't get any errors. So let's go for that. Program. It's compiling the sketch. You wait a little while. Not in sync. So it's getting an error. Let's remove the wires I put in. Maybe they are picking up static. It's not using all the memories or anything, so it should just work. So it's not syncing correctly. So let's just copy this error message and actually use chat GPT <laughs> to see what's wrong. Uh, I get the following. Error message trying to program the nano. And you get a whole list of things that are wrong. So there's a few suggestions here. We could check immediately change the board type so let's try that could be that these uh, clone boards are not uh, supported <laughs> now let's see arduino nano 328 uh, let's see Pro and Pro Micro, no, I don't see the option it gave, so. Let's go for next one. The wrong serial port is selected, no, we double check that. Uh, the wrong board type is selected, we also check that right now. The bootloader is damaged, that could be the case. And uh, it's a little harder to program you need a special programmer for fixing the bootloader. USB driver issue. 
if you are using a Windows computer, you, you need to install USB drivers. I think this is the issue. <laughs> uh, installing USB drivers for a clone nano. Okay, so it gives me even the <laughs> even the drivers I need to install. <laughs> so CH340 is what I need to install. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's the CH variant because I've actually done this before. But otherwise, yeah, you go, go with this one. So let's just find Arduino, Arduino, Nano, Clone, CH340 drivers. These are from SparkFun, so these are quite safe to go. Uh, okay, so does it detect install? It's installing. I got, I got this. I press ins install, and it, I got a successful install. So let's close this down. Reconnect the Arduino. I disconnected it. Reconnect it. It's blinking now. I have the blink. I have the blinking light uh, source code on it. Just a test source code. So let's try this out again. Com port six. It's still on the same Arduino Nano. Let's try this again. This time should be able to sync and uh, then program. Maybe I need to close down the ID. Yeah. So let's just check the drivers first. On the device manager. So it's under a USB serial device or COM port. Here you go. CH340, so it is the correct driver. Correct speed and everything. Update the driver just in case if there is any. It installed something. There we go. You can also roll it back if you see it doesn't work. Okay, so let's start the IDE again. Okay, so I have the ID set up. Let's just check again. Everything set up as I wanted to. I don't know if this makes a difference, but uh, I'll check it on the web. This is the problem with clones. If you buy an original one, you don't need to worry. I got the same. Okay, so let's check. Okay, this is done. This is also done. Improper board selected. Missing bootloader. Yeah, static damage. So these two could actually be the case for me. I do have another one somewhere unused. I'll disconnect my 3D printer because it runs on the same chip. Okay, so I'm back in the device manager. Uh, let's go to LPT COM ports. It's still on COM6. Uh, let's uninstall it completely. Reinsert it. And it's inserted again. Let's see what it picked up. COM6 still. 
Maybe I can change the COM port. Uh, let's see. Let's put it at COM 10. There you go. It's on COM port 10. Could be that it's in use of some other application at the same time. That could be the case. Could be the USB port I'm using. Pretty much. Could be anything. So let's try this again. No upload port provided. Okay, so I forgot to change the port. We go to 10. Trying again. Please work. No. Okay. So everything's pointing to a faulty bootloader in my Arduino. That sucks a little bit because I need to reprogram the bootloader. And that's going to make it a little harder. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, so uh, the only thing that was necessary was to choose the programmer. Uh, I forgot to do that. Arduino as ISP. And then you also have to change to the old bootloader on the processor. This is because this is a clone. You can't use the new one. But that's fine. Let's just show you. So it's compiling, uploading, and done uploading. So, so it worked. So the way you get the code to boot is disconnecting it from the USB and connecting it again. So that's what I'm going to do. I have it on COM port 10. So let's start up the Python script this time and see if I can make it communicate with the uh, Arduino. It's going to give me an, an error, obviously, but I'm not connecting it to the Xbox yet. Do I have Python installed? I do. So I, I actually don't even need to do that. So what you do is you go to your folder. Let's see. Go into the Python folder. And just run it as Python, but you can't actually do that because uh, Python is not a Windows app. So you need to do this so the CMD wherever you want to go on the folder here, and you get the command tab in the same folder. You type Python, then uh, this app actually has some instructions. You have to type in read, I think it was. Let's see if we can get the page up uh, so I don't screw this up too hard. Let's see here. Arduino Pro. Prog. This is the one I'm using, I think. Or this one. This one. Prom, no, that's not that. Was this the one? Yeah, this is the one I'm going to use. If I actually read <laughs> the instructions, maybe it will work. Pi install, Pi serial. Okay, so I need actually to install a few things on Python. To make it work uh, so this isn't the easiest okay so let's just try this python arduino prom command read it will fail horribly because it's not connected obviously so i just copy the command paste it it won't find Python, so I need to use Anaconda for this, uh, unfortunately. Anaconda. You could you, you use VS Code, but it's a pain in the ass. Let's see what folders we have here. This. The uh, Arduino Pro Master. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's paste the command here instead. This is like a command prompt, but with uh, 
Python installed and uh, some packages. This is the base. You can actually do sub uh, package holding stuff because it all are doing uh, all Python applications require different packages installed and some require some to be removed. So th this is an easy way to keep them separate. I'm using the base right now, like it says here, base. So hopefully this works without any issues. Can't open file, blah, blah, blah. No such file or directory. Uh, did I? Ordinary prom p eprom. Okay, so it's complaining about this file. I see. Let's me check the name of the file. Ordinary prom that pi. Okay, so I need to go in one more folder. Okay, so, uh, that's the issue here. Nothing else. So I'm in the wrong folder. Just need to go to the Arduino folder. No, Python folder. Yeah, Python. Python folder. Now I can run the command. It's missing the serial module, just like it said on the manual. So let's install those. It wants me to run these two. So let's just install PySerial. You just paste it in and let it run. And you do the same with the other one. The response I want from this is uh, fail to read instead of a failure to load modules or stuff. A tip for command prompt, you can use the arrow keys, arrow up goes through everything you wrote before. <laughs> so you can just come back to this. Reading a prompt via comport one, uh, that won't work because there, there's nothing on comport one. It will probably fail in a few minutes. I don't know what it's doing. There was something on Comport 1. Just Let's just cancel it. Control C a few times. And it should cancel out of it. Uh, it should. It usually does. Uh, let's say it like that instead doesn't want to cancel out so i screwed up because that com port is actually in use probably by something on my computer so what i need to do right now is close it down open it again because i screwed up it does happen oh no so the way I'm auto-completing in the command prompt, uh, like you see here, I just type P and then tab, and you get the auto-completed. I just paste the command for reading again. Uh, let's see. Where are the examples? Write, read. There we go. Uh, let's copy the this i can make a web interface for this so you don't have to type anything in anaconda you still need to run the python script so it's semi useful <laughs> uh, let's see so this this and we change the comport to 10. it should fail after a while Error reading EEPROM, checking connect, uh, check connection. So let's uh, go over to the Xbox and uh, desolder the holes and uh, see if I can make a good connection with just the DuPont cables and see if we can get something from the chip. These two need to be cleaned out. Okay, I'm putting my iron to uh, maybe 300 or so. Do I have a big tip on it? 
Uh, I have the conical one, but that fits quite nicely there. And let it heat up. I'm going to use some braid uh, for this. I have some braid here, right here. I need to cut off the top. This is quite thin stuff. If you're cutting braid, don't cut it on top of your uh, console because it can fall in. Uh, I'm also putting some flux. I use the paste kind. Yeah, AM Tech, probably really fake, but it works. It's a paste flux. I use a toothpick. Doesn't matter if you clear out some of the other holes around it. I'm not sure I'm going to use the mod chip that came with it because it looked like crap. <laughs> it doesn't work, so probably broken. So what you do is just put this here on top and wait a little bit. Never slide it around with pressure. Just let the wick do the job. Okay, it's going. Sometimes it helps actually to put in some solder, solder to remove <laughs> solder. I yeah, know it sounds counterintuitive. It could be that this is actually a leaded solder and it's a lot harder to heat up the board. Could also use the hot air to help along on the way. Okay, so it did extract some, but not all. So what I'm going to do is put on some more flux, kick up the heat to 400 C. Shouldn't be necessary, but when it's being stubborn, you just have to. And the wick I I use is not really good either. Okay, so that's a lot of flux for that specific spot. I do have a microscope, but uh, I'm not doing it right now with that because it's not needed. I can see this with my eyes. There we go. One one hole clear. The flux does all the difference. No. It's almost clean. I just need to run it through once more. No, it's still full of solder. I would recommend a bigger tip for this. I'm not doing it with a bigger tip because I'm lazy. Yeah, I need to put on some more flux because I'm lazy. Just have patience. If you want to learn how to solder and stuff, uh, there is a great video with uh, Richard from Learn Electronics to Repair. He recently taught a young lady how to solder and desolder micro components. Not only was it educational, it was fun to watch. <laughs> there we go. It's cleaned out yeah. quite nicely, I think. Just going to cut off a piece of my wick and try again, just in case. Obviously, I'm going to clean this with some uh, IPA afterwards. I'm trying to get as much heat as possible into the joint. That looks pretty good. So let's clean it off and see what we have. 
I have a little sprayer bottle with some IPA in it. You can't really find it right now. Oh, here it is. Just a little sprayer. Unfortunately, where I live, it's hard to get IPA higher than uh, 96. So it leaves some residue, but hey, as long as it works. I also use old toothbrushes for this because they are really good at scrubbing without actually damaging anything. You can, you should still be careful with small components like the small capacitors and stuff. I'm recording this, so I'm not that afraid of losing anything. I'm going to get some paper. One sec. I do have some Q-tips as well. I'll use the Q-tips. I usually use some uh, paper to dab up all the IPA, but this time I'll use the Q-tips. So just spray on the Q-tip off camera or maybe on camera. Okay, just clean up everything around it. So hopefully that's clean enough uh, to actually do a test. So my idea is to use the DuPont cables just to slide them in like this. This hole is clear. This one is actually not clear. So I need to do some more work. Let's turn the iron on again. This time I'll introduce some more solder into the hole. Use this kind. This is really thin stuff. I usually have a thicker one, but this works. So the idea behind this is you mix the unleaded with leaded, so it makes it easier to suck up afterwards. On this tip, it's not even melting solder. Is it? Oh, it's not hot enough yet. Okay. Well, if it was hot enough to wick, it should be hot enough to solder as well. There we go. Nice and clean blob. Let's put on some more. So it makes this all the way through. There we go. Okay, sorry. Everything's spread out here on the Xbox drive and stuff. So I have a little of everything everywhere right now. Let's try to wake this up now. Oh yeah, forgot the flux. Yeah, the flux is kind of important. It helps the solder flow. And I want it to flow out of the hole, so... <laughs> kind of important. And if you buy crappy wick like I have, Usually it doesn't come with flux inside the wick. <laughs> if you buy the good stuff, you don't need to worry too much. Yeah, I cleaned it out a little better. Let's see if the DuPont goes in now. It does. Okay. So let's clean it off again. Let's spray some alcohol. So the overhead camera is uh, 30 frames per second. And my microscope is actually 60. But because I have to upload to YouTube on a specific minimum frame rate, you only get, it, uh, get to see it at 30. Unfortunately, I'll see if I can get the overhead camera at 60 as well, so I can release my videos at 60, 60 FPS instead of uh, 30. That's for the future. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so I have the Arduino right here. I'm going to connect A4 and A5 off camera because it doesn't reach from the USB port I have. 
that's d4 not a4 okay so green goes to a4 I choose this arbitrarily because you can put whatever you like but it's just so you know where I put it in so a4 and the blue one goes to a5 and I have to check the manual on the computer where these go but they should go into one of these holes right there and you need actually need the uh, third wire that's the ground wire from uh, a ground connection from the Xbox to your Arduino this is so it has a common ground so it uses the same ground as a reference so I actually screwed up and didn't actually clear out a, a hole for that but I have to do that as well uh, let's see where do I have the ground connection here one second I check the <laughs> documentation here okay so I'm switching back, back just to show you this show the ground strap is right here see and goes to ground that's pin something on this one I can check which one is, it is on mine not too hard you can just type uh, Arduino Nano pin out and you, you will get a picture just like this okay so let's see so SDASCL so I need to actually bring up the pinout uh, Arduino uh, I spell it right Arduino Nano pinout you'll get a couple of hundred <laughs> pictures images here we go. Here's a comprehensive one. Okay. So, okay. So, we have SDA and SCL on pins A4 and 5, just like I thought. SDA is on pin 4. And let me check exactly where SDA goes, if it's the left or the right one. I think it's the left one. Yeah, SDA goes there and SCL goes there. And for ground, we have one ground over there, one over there. So it's the one from the con on the programmer side, the second one. And this is a reference ground, I'm guessing. It is marked as GND, G so fine, I'll find it quite easily. And on the Xbox side, it was, let's see, down there. Okay, so I need to clear out that hole as well. Okay, let's do that. Let's switch over again. More fun desoldering stuff. This is not fun by any means, but I want to fix the Xbox. That will be fun, actually, to get it working. I do have a working one, so I can't say I... I need this one working but it's fun to actually get stuff working I get uh, some kind of enjoyment <laughs> of fixing stuff okay so let's put on some flux right there okay I didn't get any with me oh that's way too much <laughs> it, lo it looks like just a little bit when you have it in your hands but when you put it in the camera it looks like a lot okay some solder i have it at 400 i almost dropped the nano let's just fill up the hole here melt it in there we go that looks nice Okay, and I ha still have some flux. Almost gone, everything. Yes, you did it. Come on, clear out, please. 
this board is quite fake so takes a little hit and time okay so i recover the hole only issue with wick is you can't really see you if you are right on it or a little up to the side of the thing I do is I roll the the tip a little bit just back and forth here so I don't miss okay that's not good you should never move it like I did yep uh, that looks about right let's take a DuPont cable and try it out uh, I use the brown one for wire uh, for ground so in here does it go in it does not, I guess. No. So it has some solder on the bottom side. So let's fill it up again and repeat until we can get that clean out, cleaned out completely. And this is is on the ground plane, so I'm not surprised this is harder. I'm trying to hit the pad and the solder at the same time. There we go. Some more flux. Uh, when you're buying flux, buy the tubes or these big containers make a, makes all the difference because you'll always have some. If you've tried to solder without flux, <laughs> you know what I mean. It works, you can do it, but it's a pain in the ass. Everything takes like twice as long or even longer. Let's see if I can get it cleaned out. It's not really soaking in too well, so it's the heat. I'm missing some heat. My iron is not very good because it's not hot enough normally. I do have an extra iron I got from Richard, a 65 watt. I bought it from him after he did his review. And it looks amazing. I haven't set it up yet because I need a power supply. And I just got it from AliExpress. I haven't had time to test it out or anything. Let's get the DuPont cable. Are you freed up? No, not even close. So I'll put it at max. That's 480 on my crappy station. I'm going to do a trick that's cutting off the actual braid and using it without it connected to the rest of the braid. So a small piece like this. You usually use tweezers to hold it in place. And do this. So this makes it so it doesn't wick away all the heat, the rest of the braid. And that worked a lot better. It, so, a lot more heat, a smaller piece of braid. So, I'm just letting it cool down. And uh, let's just test this so I don't get disappointed. Yep, the DuPont cable goes right in. It's loose inside. So, hopefully, it's a good enough connection to actually program this thing. Let's clean it off again. Flux is not conductive, not this kind anyway. So we want uh, it as clean as possible. Because we will want it to conduct electricity, the cables we're going to put here. And of course, uh, because the IPA is bad quality, it actually contains some water. Could screw up something. Okay, so let's see. Do I see any damage? No, not really. Okay. 
So let's try this out. This is ground. Ground doesn't actually need to go here. It's just easier this way. I think I need my USB extension cable because it's driving me nuts. It doesn't really reach. Uh, let's see. Do I have any I'm not using right now? Oh, that's for the camera. Okay, so let's see if I can get this in frame. So green is SDA, SEL is blue. And then this is ground. No, I uh, don't want it to touch that. Okay. So because I don't want it shorting out anywhere, so I'm using a bit of cardboard just to put it on. The program is exactly off frame. Okay, so let's see. Light is still on. It's connected the right way around, I think. I'm just going to double check. So green was A4 and A5 is blue. Uh, so let's just check so they go to the right place. Green was A4, so that should be SDA. Okay, so let's switch over. And green goes to SDA, I think. And let's just switch over again so I can see it. Green goes to the left one, so yeah, SDA. So let's see the nano. A4 is SDA, perfect. And then the blue one goes to the other one exactly close to it. And it's A5. Uh, it goes right here, SEL. Yeah. And then we have the ground wire. It's not on the same place, but it is connected to ground. So, okay. Uh, time to see if there are Arduino actually reads i have to turn on the power on the xbox first leave it on for about a minute so it everything boots up so nothing else is contacting the bus and then we should be able to read off the chip so let's let me hook it up you need to hook up the video as well because it won't work without it power and video cable connected no dvd drive right now I don't know if the DVD drive is run by I squared C, but it makes for uh, one less device that, that can go wrong. Okay, we'll go back here. Let's see if this works. It didn't fail immediately. That's a good sign, I guess. It did. Okay, so the connection is probably quite bad. So. Let's see if we can improve the connection a little bit. Maybe some thicker connecting pins or something. I'm going to use two female DuPont wires instead, uh, double female, and uh, use some, uh, what are they called, pin headers to push into the hole. They have a slightly bigger metal rod, so they should make a little better connection. Yeah, just to explain what I mean, here are the double female, that's female on both sides. And here are the types of headers I'm talking about. Just normal pin headers. Let me break off two together. Like this. I'm going to use the tweezers to push it in. But first, I'm going to choose my cables and push them into the connector. So I have orange on the left side and brown on the right. Yeah, that should work. I'll push them in here. There are a tighter fit. 
not much but it's tight a little tighter and then I do the same for the ground I'll break off one of these It's easier said than done, obviously. Mm. Have, having issues just getting one. Okay, it flew away. Okay, there we go. I have, to, I have one pin. Let's put the black wire there. And the little pin. That seems a better or more solid so okay so I have a red extra wire here I don't need to connect to anything so a4 goes to the s pin a5 goes to the brown I don't have the Xbox on right now, just in case. And then ground is over here. So it's hooked up again. I just need to push down the pins once again. This is a flaky connection at best. So hopefully it's good enough to just read and then write it again. I'll double check the code in a little while. I could do a de detect. It also has that functionality. Give me a second and I'll check exactly how it does that. Oh, I'm uh, kind of stupid. I didn't turn the Xbox on. <laughs> yeah, you live and you learn. Let's see. Xbox on. Otherwise, the chip is not powered on because it uses the 5 volt rail of the Xbox. <laughs> Uh, sometimes hindsight is painful. I leave this in the video to let you know I'm only human. I fuck up all the time. Okay. So let's push down on both connections. Press the enter button. Maybe I didn't wait enough. Still check some error, error reading. So this sucks. I'll be back when I figure this out. I'll pause the video for now. One eternity later. A little digging. I found out that the code was wrong actually. Uh, I found one line incorrectly done in the Arduino sketch. Let me show you where. So, this was incorrectly set. Uh, let me show you what it says right now. So, this line made it jump directly to the end of the switch statement. So, it ignored all this and just jumped down to the default and just sent a zero back. The reason for this is that it puts the variable that holds the response as a character, but uh, it's sent as a string, so you have to convert it. Okay, so this is the original file, and as you can see here, it just does a serial read, nothing else. And it reads uh, the, the character that comes in, uh, it's actually incorrect, so it gets uh, like confused on what to do with it, so it just jumps over all these and goes directly to the default. Fix for this, I'll put it in the description. You have you only have to change line 51. I'll, I'll probably just put up a modified file for both this and the python file the python file also needed a few minor tweaks so let me show you how it should look 
this is side by side so you see here it uses a char and this then serial phrase int so it it takes it and converts it into an int and then into the char folder okay next let's look at the changes done on the python script this won't matter if you just download it so the python script is right here i'm using notepad plus plus you could use pycharm or anything else to edit it so there are two differences here i changed uh, the actual startup script this one it had one extra thing on the back and uh, uh, let me just show you one sec uh, Pro to do. So. okay so let's put them side by side Okay, so let's go down to the same. This. Okay, so you see here, this is the same line as this, but I removed the port that uh, equals, baud rate equals, it's not necessary, so I just simplified it. Timeout, you have to put in timeout, and then it has this. This makes it not work. Uh, can't really remember what this is for but you can just remove it and i also added before after the exit statement i added sleep so this gives the arduino time to uh, after the connection is done uh, to actually activate it takes a few seconds without this it fails like it's not woken up yet and And this actually works perfectly uh, after those that change. You don't need to change anything else. It gets a good response. Uh, it saves the file. I'll show you, the, show you it right now. So I'll close it down. So th the only thing you need to change here is the connection and the sleep, pretty much. It took me a while, I had to make some test scripts to see what was going wrong. I couldn't get the serial working until I read up in a post somewhere that you need a sleep period after you activate the serial. That was pretty much the entire problem. And of course there was an issue with the actual Arduino script as well, so uh, there are multiple issues here. <laughs> okay, so. For this to work, you need Python installed. I'm using Anaconda, but you can just install Python from the Microsoft Store. You have to navigate to your files. Python. I have a few files here. I'm going to use, you see the one that read EEPROM. I made it myself and it works. It can read the EEPROM quite easily and save it to a file. And uh, this is the original file. This is also a test script. Uh, so you use this uh, with the commands you have on the page here. I'll post the commands in the description as well. And you the only thing you have to change in the command is the port number pretty much here I have 10 on mine you can also change the name of the bin file and we re read it uh, I don't think I pressed enter maybe I did okay I did see and it got the Xbox serial number that means it's all good it's reading it correctly so we can actually load this bin file into a tool uh, the tool is available through a 
few different places, but I'll show you where I got mine. I go on, went into uh, Google Drive. I'll I'll uh, share this one later. And uh, under uh, I think it was under EEPROM. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Apps, then EEPROM, I think. PC apps. Yeah, and then EEPROM tools. And live info. This is a beta version 3 point something or other. Yeah, beta 3. I already have it, so I'll just open it up. So this is a specialized tool to read the uh, Xbox pin files. It already has it in the memory because I loaded it before. I want to show you the error message I got. The, the XBE and video region are incorrect. So my suspicions about this console were completely correct. It was set to NTSC PAL US, so not even close to the region. I thought it was set to Japan, but go figure. So I can set it to Europe, uh, PAL Europe Australia here, and resave the bin as a EEPROM and then mod mod bin uh, th these are quite uh, important to have uh, the key the online key is not that important anymore because you can't play online but this one is really important if you want to put in a bigger drive or something else now it's saved i haven't tried flashing the actual chip yet so let's see if that works or if i need to do any modifications to the code hopefully i don't <laughs> uh, let's see how does the page say we flash it right i've been okay so you need to type python da, 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 and then the eprom name okay so let's do this compton I have a backup of the bin file now, so I'm not scared of wrecking it. Mod. And then uh, press enter. And let's see what happens. Press enter to write. Warning, this will rewrite your EEPROM. Yeah, that's good. Write successful. Verifying. Error with writing EEPROM. So... It could write it, but I don't think it could read it afterwards. So let's see if we can read it back. Hopefully it's with the change on. Hopefully it's readable still. <laughs> yeah, it is. It... Okay, I saved it to the same EEPROM bin. So that was a really bad idea. But it think it worked so I should have changed this to EEPROM 2 or something uh, okay so let's see if I fucked up completely or just partially so a live info let's open this again load EEPROM this one got the mac address and everything so that should work fine but it didn't actually save the data to the eprom it's still ntsc us let's load the secondary i did that is set to pal so it's not saving the file so i'll, I'll do some more research and come back later and uh, try to get it to write the actual code maybe there is another fault in the coding Obviously, something went wrong. So after re reviewing the file again, I read it back uh, from the Xbox, like you can see here. Uh, the, it actually shows the change I saved in the file. So it seems that the program is trying, uh, the verifying part is not working correctly because it is writing everything which is working 
I read it back from the Xbox and it's working. Uh, every time I read it back, I get the same message. My capture card uh, suddenly stopped working or the power supply for it. I'm looking for one right now. I tested the, the Xbox on the TV and it works. I get color uh, and this login screen. I don't have a game to test, so I don't know if the driver is working or not. If you go after it reading, uh, what's it called, uh, the burnt DVDs, it won't read them, but that could be different with original discs. I'll try to get my hands on some original discs. I thought I had some, I didn't. Okay, so I'll I'll modify the files and uh, put them up so that someone else can do this. Uh, I'll also put up a small picture with the connections, where they go, uh, and the wires connections for the Arduino Nano. It's more common the Micro and then the Macro Pro. And it's a lot cheaper as well. So what I need now is to capture some footage of it working. And uh, then after that, see if the mod chip is working. I'm guessing no, but who knows? Maybe it is working and I'm just dumb. <laughs> okay. Let's go on with the next part. So I think I got my capture card working finally, so you can see what I see. So let's turn it on. Look, that glorious black <laughs> no, That's just the capture card. Uh, I'll or the upscaler. The capture card can actually handle the resolution and the mode but the upscaler cannot so i'm stuck in 8-bit but it works perfectly let me plug in a controller here on the first port that has a lot of jizz on it being careful not electrocuting myself it's working the sound is working i can hear it in my, in my headphones so Perfect. Missing a setting for network. It's never been set up or it's an old version. And this works. Now for part three, we're going to do a, a check on the actual mod chip and see if it's worth keeping or if I order a new Aladdin chip for it. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Bye. Thank you for watching until the end. So I'll try to make a condensed version of this video in the future. This was a hard one to crack. Uh, We're going to go for part three, the, where I test the mod chip. See you then. Bye.